Hello everyone, my name is Rusty and I'm here today to talk about the ACLS 2020 updates and we're covering the tachycardic algorithm. Everything starts out with a good assessment. We have to assess our patients for appropriateness of that clinical condition. Normally between a heart rate of 100 to 150 is sinus tach and it's normal, normally an underlying cause. Chugging some monster, exercise, anxiety, shock, things like that. Uh, once it gets over that 150, then it becomes a cardiac issue. Like I said, we need to identify those underlying causes and treat them. And of course, do that primary ALS care, IVO2 monitor. So, and then determine if the patient is stable or unstable. To determine if this patient is stable or unstable, we're going to look for those serious signs and symptoms, and they are altered mental status, acute heart failure or JVD, chest pain, hypotension, and signs and symptoms of shock. You're going to look from head to toe and look for those pale, cool, diaphoretic, because if you're diaphoretic, you're fixing to die. You're sweating bullets like this guy down here, sweating bullets. And that's the outward sign from your body saying, I need help. Look for those serious signs and symptoms to determine if they are stable or unstable. In this presentation, we're going to talk about these four tachycardic areas. Are they fast and unstable, fast, stable, and narrow, fast, stable, and wide, or do they have torsades de pointes? All right, folks, if they are fast and unstable, unstable meaning they have a serious sign and symptom, altered mental status, acute heart failure, chest pain, hypotension, sinus symptom of shock. If they have one of those because they're all serious, then they are unstable. If they are fast, they're over 150 beats a minute, and it doesn't matter if it's narrow or if it's wide. If they are fast and unstable, they need immediate synchronized cardioversion. Prior to 2020, you needed to know the different rhythms to start at a different energy level, but they've smoothed it out in 2020. Now you're just starting at 100. If that doesn't work, you're going to sink and go to 200. If that doesn't work, you're going to sink and go to 300. If that doesn't work, you're going to sink again and go to 360. So they've smoothed it out for synchronized cardioversion in 2020. Let's go through the steps next. Let's go through the steps of synchronized cardioversion. The first step is getting out those pads and making a heart sandwich. Right upper chest left side or anterior posterior position then we're going to turn on the sync button the sync button's right down here then you're going to see once the sync button's in place you're going to see inverted triangles over those r waves or just little tick marks on some monitors then you're going to set your energy level set your energy here like i said they've smoothed it out the first synchronized card diversions at 100 the second sink is at 200, the third sink is at 300, and the fourth sink, if needed, is at 360. Then we're going to charge the monitor. Next is clearing the patient, and then we're going to push and hold, push and hold the shock button. We're going to hold it down so the computer in that monitor synchronizes that electrical discharge on that R wave. And that's the steps of our synchronized card version. Sink, set, charge, clear push and hold sync set charge clear and push and hold as a review of fast and unstable if they are fast over 150 beats it doesn't matter if they are narrow or if they are wide if they have a serious sign and symptom they need immediate synchronized cardioversion remember the steps of making that heart sandwich hitting that sync button setting your energy level First sink is 100, second sink is 200, third sink is 300, and fourth sink, if needed, is 360. Then you're going to charge it, you're going to clear the patient, and then you're going to push and hold so that electrical discharge is on that R wave. If they're fast and unstable, synchronize cardioversion. Now we're going to talk about fast, stable, and narrow. Fast being over 150 beats. Stable being no serious sign of symptoms and narrow that QRS complex is less than 0.12 or three little boxes. 
Our memory jogger for fast, stable, and narrow is vigorous aging adults can bear down. That is, vigorous aging adults can bear down. The vigorous stands for vagal maneuvers. Next is adenosine, six milligrams, then adenosine, 12 milligrams. Then we have a calcium channel blocker, and last but not least is a beta blocker. The memory jogger, vigorous aging adults can bear down. Let's go through those individually. If your patient is fast, stable, and narrow, the first thing you're going to attempt are vagal maneuvers. To stimulate that vagus nerve that is hooked to that parasympathetic nervous system that helps slow your heart down. You can try Valsalva, pinching your nose and blowing out like when you go over those tall mountains. Or you can have your patient blow on the plunger out of a syringe or have them bear down like you're having a bowel movement. You can do a carotid massage or for pediatric patients, you can put that ice bag on the face to stimulate that mammalian dive reflex to help that heart rate slow down. If you tried Valsalva blowing on a syringe or bearing down like you're having a bowel movement and it didn't work, you can try a carotid massage. We are going to massage the carotid artery at the angle of the jaw because in that area, there's a sheath that holds the vagus nerve and the carotid arteries together. First, you're going to listen, auscultate for bruise. Bruise is turbulent blood throw through a narrowing artery. If it's you hear bruise, that means there's plaque and we don't want to massage there because you could loosen that plaque and stroke your patient out and that would be bad. So listen for bruise first on each side. If there are none, then you can take two fingers and push at the corner of that jaw hard enough to dent a tennis ball and massage for about 15 to, to uh, I should say 10 to 15 seconds. This actually works in about 25% of the patients if done correctly. So listen for bruise, push hard enough to ten dent a tennis ball and perform a carotid massage. Let's review our vagal maneuvers. We can vow salva, squeezing our nose and blowing out, or blowing on that syringe. Push that plunger out. You can do it. You can do it. Or carotid massage. Listen for those bruises and then massage at the corner of that jaw. You can also bear down like you're having a bowel movement. And for younger patients, you can, well, dip their head in ice water or that ice bag to the face is a type of vagal maneuver. Try those and if it doesn't work, we'll go to the next treatment. If vagal maneuvers are unsuccessful, we're going to use adenosine. There are two different doses of adenosine if the first one doesn't work. They are 6 milligrams rapid IV push followed by a 20 cc flush. In one or two minutes, if the first doesn't work, we're going to do 12 milligrams rapid IV push followed by a 20 cc flush. There are two different techniques for this adenosine push. You can do the two needles in one med port, pushing and holding the medication and then pushing that flush. We are pushing and holding that drug syringe because the flush could be so powerful that it pushes saline back up into the drug syringe, reducing your flush. So push and hold your drug and then push your flush. Then another technique is using a three-way stopcock. A lot of places have needleless systems nowadays, so we're going to employ the three-way stopcock. You're going to turn the stopcock so it's on to all the flow. So the arm is down in this picture. And then you're going to do the same thing. Push and hold the drug and push the flush. Remember, your adenosine sentence is 6 milligrams rapid IV push followed by 20 cc flush in one or two minutes. 12 milligrams rapid IV push followed by 20 cc flush. If that doesn't work, we have more treatments to try. Here we go. If our first two treatments don't work, then we consider a calcium channel blocker or a beta blocker. Our calcium channel blocker is cardiazem. Our first dose of cardiazem is 0.25 milligrams per kilogram. If that doesn't work, in 15 minutes we're going to try 0.35 milligrams per kilogram. If we don't have cardiazem, then we're going to try a beta blocker 
and we're going to use propranolol. One milligram slow IV push, and we can repeat in two minutes as needed up to a max of 0.1 milligram per kilogram. So, Cardiozam or Propranolol? Check it out. And here's our review for fast, stable, and narrow. They are fast, over 150 beats a minute. They are stable, no serious signs and symptoms. That QRS complex is less than 0.12 or three little boxes. Our memory jogger is vigorous aging adults can bear down. We're going to try a vagal maneuver. Valsalva, blow on a syringe, carotid massage, bear down like you're having a bowel movement, or for pediatric patients, ice pack to the face. If that doesn't work, six milligrams rapid IV push followed by a 20 cc flush in one or two minutes. Then 12 milligrams rapid IV push followed by a 20 cc flush. Then we can consider a calcium channel blocker or beta blocker, cortisone or propranolol. Just remember for fast, stable, and narrow, vigorous aging adults can bear down. Let's move on to fast, stable, and wide. Our memory jogger is when your rhythm looks like the mountains, think of the Alps. When your rhythm looks like the Al mountains, think of the Alps. Those Alps medications are amiodarone or lidocaine or procanamide or sodalol. We don't want to use any of these medications together because they are used to slow your heart down. And if we combine them, well, it just might slow and stretch that mountain rhythm out into asystole, and that could be bad. All right, we are fast, over 150 beats. We are stable, no serious signs and symptoms, and we are wide. Greater than 0.12 seconds or greater than three little boxes. If you cannot determine if that rhythm is narrow or wide, we can try adenosine. You can try adenosine if you can't determine if that rhythm is narrow or wide. Remember that dose is six milligrams rapid IV push followed by 20 cc flush. However, you guys are great street cardiologists and you can determine that rhythm is greater than three little boxes. So our first choice would be amiodarone. We're dripping it 150 milligrams over 10 minutes. We can repeat this if needed for another 150 milligrams over 10 minutes up to three times. And then hopefully, goodness gracious, we convert them and we do that maintenance drip of one milligram a minute for the first six hours. So remember, Amiodarone, 150 milligrams over 10 minutes. If amiodarone is unavailable and you have, well, lidocaine, your loading dose range is 0.5 to 0.75 milligrams per kilogram up to 1 to 1.5 milligrams per kilogram. I say, hey, go big or go home, and I'd like to start at 1 milligram per kilogram. Then, if that doesn't help, that 1 milligram per kilogram, you may repeat in five to 10 minutes at half of your loading dose, half of your loading dose. So I went one milligram per kilogram first. My next dose will be 0.5 milligram per kilogram. And we can continue that 0.5 until we reach a max dose of three milligram per kilogram. So let's talk this out. We got one milligram per kilogram. Then in five to 10 minutes, we can do a 0.5 milligram per kilogram. Then another five to 10 minutes, we do another 0.5. That makes a total of two milligrams per kilogram. If it doesn't work, in five, 10 minutes, we can do another 0.5 milligram per kilogram. If it doesn't work, in five to 10 minutes, another 0.5. And then we're finally maxed out at three milligram per kilogram. And then hopefully, to goodness gracious, they convert and we can start that drip at one to four milligrams a minute to keep them out of VTAC. So if you don't have amiodarone, let's try some lidocaine. All right, if you don't have amiodarone or lidocaine and just happen to have that procanamide sitting on the shelf, we can try it. The dose of procanamide is 20 to 50 milligrams a minute. Procanamide, 20 to 50 milligrams a minute until 
because there are four reasons to stop a procainamide drip, and they are. You fixed them, or suppressed the rhythm. The patient becomes hypotensive. The QT interval increases greater than 50%. We need to stop it or it's going to stretch on out to asystole. Or you reach that max dose of 17 milligrams per kilogram. Remember, procainamide, 20 to 50 milligrams a minute until. One of those four reasons to stop. I like pictures more than words, so here's the four reasons to stop a procainamide drip. You suppress the rhythm. Those mountains come back to a normal sinus. The patient becomes hypotensive. Your QT interval, which is the start of the Q wave to the end of the T wave, is your QT. If that elongates greater than 50%, we need to stop it. Or we're going to stretch it out into a systole, and that would be bad. Or you reach that max dose of 17 milligrams per, kil per kilogram. And that's your four reasons to stop a procainamide drip. All right, if they are fast, stable, and wide, and we don't have amiodarone, lidocaine, or procainamide, then we can try sodalol. Sodalol is one of those olol drugs and those beta blockers. If we block those betas, we reduce the contractility, automaticity, and the rate of the heart. Sodalol is 100 milligrams over five minutes. So if you don't have those other drugs, ALPS drugs, go ahead and try Sodalol, 100 milligrams over five minutes. As a review, if your rhythm looks like the mountains, think of the ALPS. Amiodarone, 150 milligrams over 10 minutes. Lidocaine, 1 to 1.5 milligrams per kilograms. And subsequent doses are half of that, 0 0.5 to 0.75 milligrams per kilogram every 10, 5 to 10 minutes until you reach a max of 3 milligrams. Then procainamide, 20 to 50 milligrams a minute until you fix them. They become hypotensive. QT interval elongates greater than 50% or you reach that max dose of 17 milligrams per kilogram. Or Sodalol, 100 milligrams over 5 minutes. If your rhythm looks like the mountains, think of the Alps. All right, we are turning on points. Polymorphic VTAC torsades de pointes. When you see torsades, think of magnesium. If they are stable, no serious signs symptoms, we're going to use magnesium, one or two grams over five minutes. It's a range, so you get a choice. The range is five to 60 minutes, but they're in torsades, so we need to fix them. So torsades is one to two grams over five minutes. If they convert, oh, thank goodness they do. Then we're going to do a drip of 0.5 to one gram an hour, titrating to that rhythm, keeping them out of torsades. All right, the other two scenarios of torsades is unstable. If they are fast and unstable, we are thinking electricity. They are unsynchronized defibrillation, torsades unstable. We're going to defibrillate 100, 200, 300, 360. And then we're going to do magnesium, one to two grams over five minutes. The range is five to 20 minutes. However, they're in torsades and they're unstable. So we need to fix them soon. And then hopefully, to goodness gracious, they convert and we go to that 0 0.5 to 1 grams per hour drip. That's if they are fast and unstable. Torsades defibrillation. And then they're dead and in torsades. Of course, if they're dead, we're doing CPR and we're defibrillating. 100, 200, 300, 360. And hey, we're doing magnesium. 1 or 2 grams over 5 minutes if they're dead. Some places say also you can just do a push of magnesium or a bolus. Hopefully, to goodness gracious, they convert and you save them. But that's our three different issues or situations with torsades. Stable, unstable, and dead. So think about one or two grams over five, five minutes. If you know that, you can make it work for all three scenarios. Thank you, American Heart Association, for updating 
emergency cardiac care every five years. I hope you enjoyed the uh, presentation of the tachycardic algorithm and we'll do these skills in lab. Have a great day.